Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to yet another episode. In today's video, you guys are not going to want to miss this one. Let me tell you that real quick. We went over to St. Pete and fished for some mangrove snapper in hopes for a catch and cook. And man, did we get the job done. We had a great amount of meat from the snapper as you guys will see later on in the video. But with that being said, I'm going to try not to talk too much and I'll see you guys on the water. Alright guys, what is up? Today we are fishing with shrimp and greenbacks. Just casting it in actually about two dozen of these greenbacks. So we're gonna be loaded for a while. What I'm doing with these greenbacks is I'm hooking them right through the tough cartilage of the nose with a circle hook. And the current's pretty strong right now, so I'm just casting it out and letting it drift right to those docks until I feel a bite. And right as I feel a bite, I just reel. Fish on. I think it's a snapper. Yep. First fish of the day. There we go. A little bloody snapper. Here, buddy, goes. Getting a bite. Fish on. Another snapper, I think so. Oh my god, that pelican just ate it. Oh my god! Oh my god! That pelican just ate my fish as I was reeling it up. Oh my god! What the heck? Oh no! Come out! No! Come on! Let go of my fish! Oh my god! Look at that, dude! Oh my god! Whew! I saved his life. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Oh my god. Oh my god, that was crazy. That is crazy. That pelican just tried to eat my fish. Did he get it? Nope. Yep, that is a 10 inch snapper all day on the dot. He's gonna go in the ice box. Whew. Switch spots because uh, in the morning I was fishing the incoming tide but now it's like one o'clock and the tide switched to outgoing. So when I first came here, I was fishing here and the tide was going that way, way too strong. So my my uh, my line would just drift so, so, so easy. So I was over there casting it and letting it go into the dock. But now that it's outgoing and it's kind of slack tide right now because the current's not that strong. It's just sitting right there and that's where all the fish are. So yeah, like I just said, I switched spots. And like I figured, the bite would be better over here anyway. And what do you know? Look how fat that snapper is. Look at his belly. Look at his, oh, there he goes. All right guys, leave a comment down below how quick you think I'm gonna get eight. I'm guessing probably 10 seconds. 10 seconds and I'll get eight. Let's see if I'm right. 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Oh, we're already eight. This is awesome, dude. Look at that clear water. Oh, look at that. That is just sick. I think we got another keeper out, actually. We might actually have another keeper. Yeah, he's probably, he's definitely a keeper. We'll measure him real quick. Doesn't hurt to measure. Let's see, one. Yep, that's a 10 inch fish all day. In the ice box he goes. Another snapper. 
I don't think he's a keeper, but you know, we'll measure him. Another 10 inch snapper in the box. Look at that boy. The mangoes are just fired up today. I told you, man, that tide switched and I knew they were gonna be over here. And what are they doing? They're chilling out over here. I'm losing count. Probably about a 12 inch snapper. Super good one for inshore. That's a freaking solid one. I don't even gotta measure him, dude. I know he's going right in the box. That is a nice one. Thank you. Have a great day. Yes, sir. This guy isn't one of the biggest. He's probably like eight inches, maybe nine. So we're gonna let him go. Here we go. Another bait in the water. The bite is just going off right now, man. That was back to back cast. But uh, he's not going to be big enough either, so. All right guys, so we made it back to the house and I got the snapper and my fillet knife all ready. Got my cutting board and the cooler and all that stuff on the counter. And I think we're just gonna get straight into it and do a little time lapse of me cutting the snapper. And then in that time lapse, I'll probably take a little break and show you guys how I fillet them and stuff like that. And then after that, I'll show you how I cook them and whatnot. So uh, let's get straight into it.
slow it down and I'm going to show you guys how I cut a mangrove snapper. So I go under the fin right here and you're going to, you're going to want to make a di diagonal cut kind of like uh, around you right around the head just like that and then you're going to flip it and then what you're going to do is right after you cut this little slit right here you're going to go you're going to want to cut a line down the backbone just like this and then you're going to want to trace it through the tail just like that and then when you have that done all you're going to do it just keeps slitting it down. I'm just getting all the meat out of there. And then when you can, because it gets kind of hard to cut it like this, just go opposite way up. Knife down so you get all the meat as possible. And then you're going to want to cut it like this, right where you started cutting. And boom. You're gonna have a nice fillet just like that. And that actually is a good fillet for a snapper. A lot of healthy meat off that fillet. And then the other side, same thing. Get that little arc going. And then do your little trail. Sometimes if you don't want to slit it, you can just put your knife all the way through if you have a long knife and just go like that, like what, what I just did. And it, it works the same way. Whatever you guys prefer. The other one is easier but takes longer. This one you just basically need a sharp knife. And boom, got another nice fillet. Now I'm going to show you guys how to get the skin off of your fillet. So what you're going to want to do is... You're gonna to wanna to like start cutting right here, right where the meat and the skin go. Hold the skin and then just start cutting through it. Just like that. And now all the skin is off. You can just toss the skin on the side. And then there's a bloodline with some bones in it. You can just feel around, go the opposite way up. And if you feel something po poking out, that's the bones. But also what I like to do, I just prefer this, is take the bloodline out, which is right in the middle. You'll, you'll be able to see it. Just cut as little off as possible, like that bloodline. And then this is the meat. Feel if there's, feel if there's any bones. If not, then you're good to go. And same thing with the other side of the fillet. Just gonna, you want your knife flat so you can get it right through it. And then there's the meat. There's the skin. Sometimes you'll have leftover meat on there. Check for bones. Nope. Cut that little right there. And then there's bones right here. Yep, and that is how you do it. That is how you flay a snapper, de skin a snapper and take the bones out. Now we're going to put it in time lapse to get it all over with.
you're going to want to do is put the fish in a bowl, any type of bowl, just big enough bowl. Put some cold water in there. And what that does, it gets all the extra access, such as like maybe some, maybe st there's still scales on it, maybe still blood, stuff like that. Just gets all the icky stuff off of it. So you have it in the bowl. And you're running cold water. You put it here. Rinse it, all that good stuff. And then you're going to put it on a paper towel and let it dry. And just repeat that process until all your fish is done. Just like that, you're going to want to leave it on a towel to let it cool and dry, get all the moisture and water off it. Alright, so what you're going to do for the breading process, it's called the three-step breading process. You do flour first, then egg, then breadcrumbs. guys so now we got all the fish ready we did the three breading uh, step process on them flour eggs and breadcrumbs like I said in the last uh, clip and now we're gonna put it on our skillet we uh, put a little bit of olive oil on there just to get a nice little base going just like this we just put them in like that and it really doesn't take that long it takes like maybe one minute to three minutes on each side and depending on the sizes you can put like probably just fill the plate but you kind of want to have some space too so like that is good and then each side will take like one to three minutes so just check out check on it every now and then with a little spatula or something like that something like this would be perfect so you can just flip it check the bottom so here we go into time lapse So I've never really done a catch and cook, but I think I'm doing good so far. But uh, so we got the snapper here. We're gonna go ahead and chomp into it. See if it's good. Mmm. Excellent. Excellent. So good. So crispy, flavorful. To get some lime on that. You guys want to know what's pretty cool too? I caught this fish like I caught these fish around like one o'clock. Bring them home, flayed them, and this is fresh fish. It can't get much better than this. Free food, well the fish, but like you get the lingo. It can't get much better than this. I caught it today, filleted it, eating it, and boy, boy, it is delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Alright, guys. So, uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, you learned something new about 
maybe how to clean a fish, descale a fish, debone a fish, catch fish, catch snapper. But uh, if you haven't already, leave a like, drop a comment, and if you aren't subscribed, come on, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. But uh, without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next episode.